We have a banger of a matchup for you today with Dennis Martinez of the Joyriders taking on Babe Ruth, leading the Originators, easily one of the best hitting teams in the league, getting things started in the first and already DeMart's in trouble with two out and a trio of ducks on the base pond. Ernie Banks is going to serve his offering into a big patch of grass, and that's going to be enough to clear the bases. Seems the OGs will be playing from ahead in this one. Top three now. The Riders have something going with two on, but it's the pitcher at the plate. He's looking to execute a bunt with no outs. Dennis gets it down, but it goes right back to the babe who fires one to second, barely beating Gant's slide, and the bunt backfires. Remember, kids, don't ever freaking bunt. Bottom three now, and it's Reggie Smith at the dish, who's going to see an inside heater, and he serves it to the right center gap. The Colossus of Cloud is chugging around the bases. Is he going to try to score? Yes, he is! The throw from George Brett's cut is late, and it's 4-0 for the home team. We move to the top of the fourth and find George Brett stepping in with runners at the corners. Brett's going to attack the first pitch, but it's handled by Banks in position from holding the runner. 3-6-4, and the threat is over. Top five now, and Chili Davis finds a high curveball and places it out in the field to his left. This brings up Ron Gant, and the man has bad intentions. He lifts the low curveball from Ruth way out over his own team's bullpen and finally puts the Joy Riders on the scoreboard. They're still in the hole, but this effort cuts the lead in half. Bottom six now, and Dennis is digging in. He has Banks in a 1-2 count, and he's going to get him with the changeup off the plate. He's fired up. Now he's facing Schoendienst, who twists his inside offering in e direction, barely squeaking over the dive and snagging himself a single. This brings up Sundberg. Bit of a hanging curveball from Dennis, but Butler makes a great effort to haul it in and get the lead runner. Being left-handed actually making that play more natural for him as Chris Spire steps up and finds himself in a 2-2 count. Dennis goes with a fastball away and gets Spire swinging. A great inning for the Riders pitcher. Moving into the seventh, Mark Grace is pinch hitting with two already down, trying to get something going against the Babe. And he does, sending a gapper to the grass. He's going to dig for second, and he's going to make it there, bringing up the top of the order for the Riders. Brett Butler has a favorable count, and he puts one on the ground and starts churning the legs. He's going to beat that out and bring up Big Evans with a chance to do some damage. Ruth leaves a fastball dead center to him, and the Evans lifts it to center field, and it's going to carry out of here. The Joy Riders have snagged a lead in the seventh inning with a two-out rally capped off by that blast, but they might not be done. Javi Lopez is stepping in, and he's going to see one pitch and follow up Evans smash with one of his own. A two-homer, four-run inning for the Joy Riders. They have one run of insurance heading into the final innings. Bottom seven now, the clutch man John Franco is on the bump, facing the OG's top, and Javi Lopez has a chance to make something happen, leaving the mask on, he's going to come up with that baseball. Ernie Banks now, with one on, one out, he works the count to 3-1, and he finds a fastball away, that's going to get by Butler, can Ruth score from first for a second time today? Gant's having a hard time getting it in, the throw goes to second, Ruth's going to score easily, cutting the lead to one. A few batters later and Franco is in a super jam. He's facing the pinch hitter Cepedo with the bases juiced. He goes to his trusty screwball away and he finds the ground ball. Easily handled by Yount, Butler handles the turn and Franco gets out of it, preserving the lead for the Riders. Moving on to the ninth now and Ruth is finally leaving the game, bringing in closer Raleigh Fingers. Big Evans is back at the plate. And he connects, sending it out to center field, but it's caught. Butler at first thought it was going to get through. He's doubled off, and the Riders fail to add to their lead going into the bottom of the ninth. They're choosing to bring in their closer as well. Troy Percival is taking the rubber, and already he's in trouble facing Eddie Matthews with two on and no outs. Fastball inside is hit. George Brett can't come up with it. That's going to load the bases, and that's going to be the leash on Percival. Jeff Reardon is going to come in and try to clean up this mess. He's facing Dave Parker, who's a choker, and he needs the strikeout here. The infield doesn't come in, perhaps a tactical error by the manager, but Reardon is working despite that. He gets a foul ball from Parker. He's going to go back to the curveball away. That one's fouled off the other way, and Reardon jumps ahead in the count. Curveball again at his ankles this time. And swing and the miss from Parker. Reardon gets the much-needed strikeout, and the cameras go out. We're blacked out for a while, and when we come back, I'm told Reggie Smith tied the game with a hit, and Ernie Banks is stepping in? The double play can send it to extras. Jeff needs to find the ground ball here. He's going to the curveball away. He gets himself strike one. He comes set and tries one inside this time. 
For a ball, he sets up outside now for the fastball. The runners are moving. It's a suicide squeeze. Reardon is running over. He grabs the baseball, throws home. It's too late. He's freaking cheating, cowardly, no honor.